It is Wednesday, my dudes, which means it is time for another First Thoughts and Initial Impressions Epic 7 video. This one will be on Laia, the character that will be out later today as of the recording of this video. Some of us have known about this character for a while through, well, data mines and leaks, and honestly, I kind of hate that it is that way. It's been uh, a worrying trend that essentially we keep having to find out about characters from the community before we actually hear about them from the official company. Hopefully this improves in the future. Regardless, you already know what it is. We're going to talk about the stats, the skills of the character. Do I think they're good? What kinds of equipments and artifacts I'd play on them? All the stuff you've come to expect. So let's not waste any more time and just jump into it and watch our S3. I'm Laia, the new member of Miracle Maid Kingdom. Do my best. Okay, we're just going to get right into it. I've seen your posts. I've heard your DMs loud and clear. In the Metadin mail, I said that I thought Laia was voiced by Christina V in the English dub of Epic 7. That is apparently not the case. You are heard. Everybody seemed to want to let me know how wrong I was, which, you know, it happens. But, um, you know, if I had a nickel for every time I had mistaken someone as Christina V... I'd have two nickels because it's happened twice. Once with Christine Marie Cabanos and now here again with Melissa Medina, who is a voiceover artist that can be heard in a number of games such as Valorant, Smite, and even Starfield. But I think for most people in this community, you'll probably know her as the voice of UL from the Grand Blue Fantasy franchise. Moving on to Laia stat, she is an Earth Warrior of the Ares Zodiac symbol, which means she shares a stat line with Urban Shadow Shu and the collab hero, Edward Elric. Taking a look at her stat, she has 984 attack, 637 defense, 6,266 health, 117 base speed, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, and no starting effectus or effect resistance. This translates to terrible attack for a 5-star, but spoiler alert, every warrior that is an Ares Warrior is a health scaling hero, so it doesn't actually really matter. Defense is respectable, again, 637. 6,266 health is kind of low, actually, for a health scaler. Usually, the really tanky, chonky health scalers, like your Apocalypse Ravis, your Shoes, your Dark Corvuses, they can get some pretty massive HP totals, whereas in the past, characters like Edward Elric and Urban Shadow Shoe have hovered between like 20k to like 25k. Now here's the rub. Laia, unlike those characters which you'll find out in a second, she doesn't need critical hit chance or critical hit damage in her kit. So she doesn't have to dedicate stats to that, which means that you could compare her to a character like Lethe, who only has around 6,100 health. Meaning that Laia is going to be, well, pretty thick, just like Lethe. So you could realistically expect this character to clock in somewhere between around... 26 to like 30k health, which is kind of impressive when you consider her base speed. So she's going to be just like Lethe in terms of how you expect her stat line to appear. Looking at her imprint release, it is health percentage for the team and imprint concentration is health percentage for herself. If you want to make her absolutely thick, then sure, chase those imprint concentrations, get those up there. I do want to caution you though, if you are a free to play player or a low spender. There is a high chance that there is another limited banner coming right after Laia in the form of Tamarin. It could be a skin, it could also be a limited. But even if that's not the case, your Skystones may still be in danger as there's some pretty good rerun banners for MLs coming up in the Mystic Summon. You have Conqueror Lilius, you have Zeo, there's a custom Mystic Summon coming next month which I'll be making a video on that. There's Navy Captain Landy potentially up for grabs. So these are really coveted characters by most of the player base. So please, again, manage your resources accordingly. And I know that's going to be hard because as we get into the kit, I think this character is quite good. And I think her artifact is also quite good. Moving on to Laia's skill set, let's start with her skill 3, the Spirit of Rock. Acquires three souls upon use, and it has a seven-turn cooldown. Attacks the enemy with a base. When the enemy is defeated, recovers health of the caster and grants an extra turn. Penetrates the target's defense by 100%, but cannot trigger a critical hit. 
Amount recovered and damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's max health. The amount of health recovered is 30% of Laia's maximum health. And the multiplier for this move is a 0.3x attack multiplier with 20% max health multiplier. Begins the first battle with full skill to cooldown count. And when this skill is unavailable due to cooldown count, at the start of every turn, decreases all skill cooldowns by one turn. Soul burn for the cost of 10 souls increases the health multiplier on this move from 20% of Laia's max health to 32%. Of Laia's max health. Laia's skill 2 is Sweet Cheers. You acquire 2 souls upon use and it has a 7 turn cooldown. It is a non attack skill that dispels all debuffs from all allies and increases their combat radius by 15 to 25% depending on Malagora before decreasing skill cooldowns of all allies except for Laia herself by 1 turn. Finally, we come to Laia's basic skill, Sing With Me. It has a 0.7x attack multiplier as well as a 10% max health multiplier attacks the enemy with a sweet melody and increases combat radius of the caster by 10 to 15 percent depending on malagora when the spirit of rock is unavailable due to cooldown count triggers a dual attack from a random ally damage dealt increased proportional to the caster's max health as we just talked about with the multiplier let's get it out of the way now this should look really really familiar to you this move is identical to cerise's mystical arrow it has the same amount of CR and the same dual attack properties. Yes, it's a health scaling move, while that one isn't. But that's a pretty strong S1, no? Mystical Arrow is one of the better S1s in the entire game. Until we got, you know, an inundation of Lilius, right? Lilii? Do, do we call the plural? Is the plural of Lilius Lilii? Since we got more Lilius in the game, then... You know, that character has kind of not been as special, but she's still played in PvE content for her dual attack chance. So, at base value, Laia has one of the stronger basic skills in the entire game, assuming her S3 is on cooldown, which we just talked about the Spirit of Rock. It starts the battle on cooldown, which means this is available from turn one. So, that's great. Basic skill is... Rock solid in PvE, it's a tried and true thing that's great in Hall of Trials, great in Expeditions. That means that the character has something going for it. But the big draw to this character is the non-attack skill S2, Sweet Cheers. The fact that it is a full cleanse, not like a partial cleanse, right? Because certain characters only get rid of two yos. This is a full cleanse with a 25% CR push for the whole team. Usually you get like 15 or 20, right? This is 25. That is a pretty decent chunk. And it also reduces skill cooldowns of all allies by one turn. So this gets around the S3 skills from both Lua and Nikwal. Two characters that people really, really hate playing against. It's pretty obvious that Laia is designed to counter Lua and Nikwal. Two things, again, People have been voicing and expressing concerns for for a while. I've made whole videos dedicated to why I think Nikwal is not good for the game. I have talked about at length, season after season, how broken Lua is and how they probably should do something about it. Well, finally, it's here. This is the character that is designed to do something about it. But this move... Kind of feels like it shows you just how far general power creep has come. Again, most cleanses, at least ones on faster bodies, right? Like maybe Ocean Breeze Lilica, it's not a full cleanse. This is a full cleanse. Most CR pushes are pretty minor, right? This is the whole team for 25%. Characters that have larger CR pushes than that, like Desert Jewel Basar, for example, like just compare, like Desert Jewel Basar is a full cleanse with a CR push like this. But it's on nowhere near as sturdy of a body as Laia is, right? He is really squishy. She's tankier than Lethe, right? And it has the skill cooldown reset component to it. Rickerus got nerfed for this back in the day. His skill was never anywhere near as good as this thing actually is. So this thing is just absolutely not so like loaded like this skill alone is the reason to pull for the character right 
if this character just had that S1 and this S2, boom, sold. Right? It's a limited, so you should probably pull it anyway because, well, it, again, you just never know with limiteds. If they are total duds and they get buffed and you don't have them, you're going to regret it. But just out the gate, a skill that is on par with Cerise's or like, you know, Camilla, Kitty Clarissa, like the dual attack guarantees, the things that are the backbone of most hard PvE content, she has that. She has a counter to the best character in RTA right now, like the best PvP character, she checks it, but also has essentially a somewhat better version of an ultimate on a Soul Weaver that saw heavy play for like a year. And it's not even her ultimate. That's absurd. What's more absurd is the skill three, the Spirit of Rock. And we already talked about what this skill did, and we already talked about the multipliers, but did you catch it? Did you happen to figure out what makes this move so insane? Well, it's twofold. One, you basically can't actually reduce the cooldowns of Lya. She doesn't need effect resistance to be able to deal with Lua or Nequal because even if she gets reset, the Spirit of Rock pseudo passive just gives you back the S2. And it's not really on a passive skill, which means she can't seal it. So you can't stop her from stopping Lua and Nequal. That's great. But the multipliers on this move, right? Are really, really close to Devil's Descent, which is Dark Corvus's S3, which is probably the best like PvP versus AI skill in the game. Dark Corvus, in case you don't know, probably the best Guild War offense unit of all time. Probably the best arena offense unit of all time. Devil's Descent is a 0x attack multiplier, so it doesn't factor in attack at all but it's 25% of his max health. This is a 0.3x attack with 20% of Lya's health. It's not going to hit as hard as Dark Corvus, right? It's just not going to do that. But it's in the ballpark, right? Obviously, Dark Corvus has like, what, 72, 7300 HP, and Lya only has like 6300. So yeah, again, it's not going to hit as hard as that move. But it's, again, pretty comparable. When you look at the soul burn values on it, it's 30% of Lya's health versus 37.5% of Dark Corvus. It even has the built-in healing just like with Dark Corvus, right? The only thing that Lya is kind of missing out is a little bit of damage and also the fact that it doesn't have extinction, which, yeah, that's a pretty big deal. But you have a character that can literally be schmoovin like at 117 base speed we've already seen this with characters like urban shadow shoe you can build a shoe like 250 260 pretty easily and still have good tank stats right i know a lot of people who have shoe around 260 with like 25 khp but they still have crit chance and crit damage this character doesn't need that because spirit of rock can't crit which means you're going to be even tankier, right? You're going to have like 15, 1600 defense, 27, 28, 29. Crazy whales out there. You might have like 30k plus health on this character. Granted, those people probably won't be moving at hyper speeds. But I think it's pretty reasonable to expect this character to be like 26 or 27 KHP moving at like the 250, 260 speed range. Some mad men, mad women out there, right? Might get 280. Hell, maybe even 300 on Laya, right? And the fact that her S2 is a CR push plus a cleanse plus an anti lu attack and she is that fast. Some team compositions, namely, you know, Cleave and Aggro, they might forego the kill shot on Spirit of Rock and just adapt this character into Cleave or Aggro entirely. This character is kind of insane, right? I think this character is going to be at worst, right? Like this is like the floor I expect for this character is she is a character that is heavily, heavily used in Guild War, right? And I'm, I'm sure Vic, if you're watching this or Lucent, you probably might agree with me that I, in my assessment here, Lya seems like a pretty insane Guild War unit, right? It's a fast, dark Corvus, like Lethe, 
but with a lot more upside and I feel like a lot more flexibility in what you can actually do with her. Obviously, that means if she's good in Guild War and she's akin to Dark Corvus, she's probably great in Arena as well. You'll probably get a lot of mileage out of her. So again, that's the floor for what I expect for the character. As for the ceiling, well, what I'm hoping for is just an honest, solid character that doesn't break the game while still answering Lua and Nikwal. But as I just talked about, characters pretty fast with an unrestricted cleanse and a huge CR push and a skill that is better than Rickerus's, which was something that had to get nerfed at some point. So wouldn't surprise me if people adapt it for aggro. Like, it's a CR pusher for aggro, like how people use Moon Bunny. Wouldn't surprise me if it's a setup for some kind of cleave. Wouldn't surprise me if it's used to cheese hard content like Abyss because you're just cycling turns so fast with her moves. And it also wouldn't surprise me if she just ends up becoming an absolute terror in the format and just stays on pre-ban status, like perma-ban status. Like, people just leave her banned because she enables some kind of crazy strategy. Or maybe she just stays banned because, well... The people who want to abuse Lua and Nikwal, they can't deal with it. Overall, I just think that this character is kind of insane. You just build her on speed set with immunity, speed set with defense, speed set with health percentage, right? Health set. Speed health is probably what I'm going for. She just seems insanely good. Again, just to recap. Skill 1 is identical to Cerise's, one of the best PvE skills in the game. Skill 3 is a lesser version of Dark Corvus that makes you immune to the cooldown pushback mechanics of probably two of the most oppressive characters the game has ever had. And the S2 is just downright ludicrous. It's just a, a crazy power crep version of skills we've seen before and skills that have been nerfed in the past. I generally think that this character has the potential to be something that is format defining, like the entire format centers around her. And I don't know if that's hyperbole or not, but it feels that way. So to wrap up, let's talk about Laya's artifact now, which is Sweet Miracle. Increases the health of the user by 5 to 10% based on artifact level. This is the same as Prayer of Solitude, which is Lethe's artifact. At the start of the turn, is a 50 to 100% chance, based on artifact level, to decrease debuff durations of the caster by one turn, can only be activated once every three turns. Well, pretty much the only thing that can stop Laia from doing her thing, stop her from actually doing a full cleanse on your team, right? So, like, if Lua tries to sleep you and then push her cooldowns back, well, then you obviously wouldn't be able to counter the character. Well... Sweet Miracle gives you a Nature Restoration, a Mediator Coeric pseudo-style passive, which is honestly pretty insane, right? It's very, very, very strong in my book. It does have two drawbacks, though. Number one, your opponent can game it. They can hit you with something like Attack Down, hold their cooldowns, wait for Sweet Miracle to auto-proc, because as you can see here, it can only be activated once every three turns. So once the thing is on cooldown, then you're free to silence her, sleep her, and then reset the cooldowns. Do what you will at that point. So that's the counterplay to it. The other thing that's somewhat of a hang-up on Sweet Miracle is surprisingly when you look at the Warrior roster, not a whole heck of a lot of characters can really take advantage of this thing. Mediator Quark is a pretty big one because, well, now you have two cooldown reduction one from nature restoration and sweet miracle so that that way he could get around two turn stuns like i winter right there there's there's definitely some applications with hand guy with this artifact and then you have things like conquer lilius zeo is a common thing that people use against conquer they try to silence the conquer cool if you're in sweet miracle you get to snap out of that it takes that zeo counter somewhat off the board not entirely obviously the cr pushback they could get to you uh, gain a lot of tempo and take her out beforehand. But it's possible, right? It's still a possible thing. And then even somebody like Reamer, right? For those people who don't go ER Reamer or they're afraid their Reamer is going to get stuff. Solitaria with her stun. Another pretty common way to deal with Reamer to stop him in those matchups. That's kind of 
one of his bad matchups is just getting stunned or silenced right off rip. Well, now if you have Sweet Miracle, that's kind of not really an option. But when you look at the rest of the Warrior cast after that, um, a lot of them are DPS characters and they really want either sustain or damage. So this doesn't really apply to them. That said, Artifact still has some uses, still seems incredibly strong. I mean, it's a different version of Nature Restoration, which is arguably one of the most busted moves in Epic 7. So having that on an artifact, yeah, it's a must pick up in my opinion. Just, you might not need as many of them as you think, right? I'd probably hold on to like one or two, but after that, yeah, I would probably just throw the rest into this thing and actually try to get it leveled up. But we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong on whether or not you need multiple of these or not. Maybe I'm wrong about how strong Laia is in general. But that's okay, because we could find out together, because I'm going to stream my polls and we're going to try and test the character. You could find it on the YouTube page. I'll be streaming under the live tab, so get subscribed, hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified when that happens. Also, I'll be streaming it over on my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash I am underscore TSU. Hopefully, I will see you there. Let me know how you feel about the character and her artifact in the comments below. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.